This is the People's Tribunal. These are the plaintiffs. David Kilgore, a Canadian lawyer and politician. And Ethan Gutman, an investigative journalist who's been researching China for two decades. They accuse the Chinese Communist Party of orchestrating a massive underground organ transplant network using the bodies of innocent people. And these are the defendants. <clears throat> uh, these are the defendants. Uh, are they not going to show? Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. According to Chinese state-run media, the World Health Organization is asking China to advise health authorities worldwide on best practices in organ transplants. That's great news, because China has so much experience. They carry out more organ transplants than any other country after the U.S., at least according to their official numbers, which are pretty amazing for a country that didn't even have an organ donation system until a few years ago. I guess that's why the National Health Commission said China's practices and experiences are now recognized by the world's mainstream medical community. But weirdly, there seems to be mixed messages from the world community. Because on one hand, Chinese doctors are working with the WHO to advise the global medical community. But on the other hand, China is also allegedly leading the world in forced organ harvesting by allegedly carrying out over 60,000 illegal organ transplants every year. That's more than triple the official transplant numbers. And they allegedly take those extra organs from Chinese prisoners of conscience. These are not people who are on death row for committing actual crimes. These are innocent people who happen to belong to groups that the Chinese Communist Party persecutes. Groups like Falun Gong, Uyghurs, Tibetans, and Christians. Of course, the Chinese Communist Party denies it completely. According to the Chinese embassy, the so-called organ harvesting is totally a lie fabricated by Falun Gong. You know how those persecuted spiritual groups can get. So the Chinese Communist Party sends them to labor camps and tortures them a little, and maybe a few hundred thousand die. Accidentally, of course. And suddenly people are accusing the party of taking their organs. I mean, who would believe them, other than independent researchers and medical experts from around the world? So how do we determine who's telling the truth? What are people going to do? Look at the actual evidence and prove it in court? Yes, yes, that's exactly what people are doing. This is the independent tribunal into forced organ harvesting from prisoners of conscience in China. It's an independent people's tribunal established to inquire into forced organ harvesting from, amongst others, prisoners of conscience in China. That sounds pretty serious. Now, the tribunal didn't get a lot of attention from the mainstream media, but in this era of infotainment news, I think it's just a branding issue. I would have called it the independent tribunal into one weird trick Chinese hospitals use to make money and help you lose weight. The results will shock you. But that's just me. Anyway, this tribunal means business. Leading the tribunal is Sir Jeffrey Nice. He led the prosecution of Serbian dictator Slobodan Milosevic for war crimes at the UN's International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. And now, Sir Nice is looking into allegations of state-sponsored slaughter in China. This tribunal, as will be recorded, is investigating if criminal offenses have been committed by state or state-approved bodies or organizations or individuals in China that or who may have engaged in forced organ harvesting. That's from the first part of the tribunal last December. And this past April 6th and 7th, he held part two. I would have called it Independent Tribunal Part Two, Electric Boogaloo. I don't know why they don't consult with me on branding. Anyway, the thing lasted two entire days, so I'll just give you the highlights in five minutes. Organ transplant researcher Ethan Gutman is the author of The Slaughter, Mass Killings, Organ Harvesting, and China's Secret Solution to Its Dissident Problem. He concluded that the Chinese regime is murdering dissidents on a massive scale and forcibly extracting their organs for profit. Spoiler alert, that's the secret solution to China's dissident problem. For about 20 years, the main source of these organs have been people who practice Falun Gong. You see, Chinese authorities claim doing these kinds of exercises is dangerous and illegal. 
so people who do them need to be re-educated in labor camps without trial. Then rich people who want new organs can visit state-run Chinese hospitals and schedule an organ transplant. And these Falun Gong practitioners would be, what's a nice euphemism, required to donate their organs right away. And now that the Chinese regime has launched a new wave of persecution against the Uyghur people who live in Xinjiang, Gutman says they're also being targeted for organ donation. Because of the Uyghur situation, it is as if we are seeing a speeded up version of the Falun Gong persecution. It's just happening at a sort of five times the speed. Which is to say, experience really is the best teacher. You start with small scale human experiments on a group no one really cares about, and then when you see results, you ramp it up on another group no one really cares about. You already built the system, so now it's faster and more efficient. Joining the tribunal by phone was former Canadian MP David Kilgore. He co-authored a book called Bloody Harvest. And look, I know you're not going to read the book, so I'll just tell you, it lays out like 30 points of evidence that Chinese authorities are killing people for their organs. It's pretty solid. Kilgore joined last weekend's tribunal by phone to give his testimony. And he was asked why, if it's all true, is there so little action by other governments around the world? It's a sad thing to say, but I am absolutely convinced that it's, it's, uh, it's a willful ignorance, that it's choosing not to, to say anything. Witnesses at the tribunal, though, said a lot about the atrocities they experienced. Like this woman, who was persecuted in China because she practices Falun Gong. She said after she was arrested, doctors collected samples of her blood. I looked and saw how much blood was extracted, and it was the first time that I had seen so much blood. It was very distressing. Experts on forced organ harvesting say taking blood from political prisoners is common and a great way to screen potential donors. She was probably lucky to escape. And then there's this woman on the screen, Mirigal Tursun. She was imprisoned in China for being a Uyghur. She joined by video through a translator. Uh, they separated me from my babies. And uh, after three hours interrogation, they sealed my mouth and a uh, black hood over my head, handcuffed me and taken me to a uh, detention place. She said her three children were also taken into custody. One of them died, and the other two came back with scars from being operated on. Now, these are pretty serious allegations. So you'd think it's only fair that the tribunal would give Chinese officials the chance to present their case. Well, they did. Representatives of the Chinese embassy were invited to counter the allegations. Good morning, everyone. Is, there, is anybody representing the People's Republic of China present in this room? No, sir. Huh. I wonder why the Chinese officials didn't show. Maybe they were just too busy advising the World Health Organization. But in the interest of being impartial and objective, the tribunal invited anyone to provide evidence that disproves the allegations that the Chinese regime is slaughtering innocent people for their organs. Our determination as a tribunal is to remain completely open to evidence of whatever inclination, persuasion, whatever you like, right until the last moment. And we hope that anyone who has or can point to evidence that will help the tribunal will come forth and make that evidence available. But so far, the evidence has been overwhelmingly the kind that Chinese officials fear. So much so that although the tribunal won't end until June, they issued a rare interim judgment back in December. We, the tribunal members, are all certain, unanimously and sure beyond reasonable doubt, that in China, forced organ harvesting from prisoners of conscience has been practiced for a substantial period of time involving a very substantial number of victims. So the interim judgment is that organ harvesting is definitely happening. The tribunal will eventually issue a final judgment that includes whether Chinese authorities have broken international law. But it's still unclear whether governments around the world will listen to what the tribunal has to say. So 
what do you think of the independent tribunal into forced organ harvesting from prisoners of conscience in China? Did the results shock you? Leave your comments below. And now it's time for me to answer a question from one of you, a fan who supports China Uncensored with a dollar or more through contributing to the crowdfunding website Patreon. Daniel Ortman asks, I'm curious about the PRC's relationship with its former USSR neighbors. Kazakhstan, I know, has ethnic and cultural ties to the Uyghurs, so I would imagine that they have had arguments over the issue. Or does China just push them around? Good question, Daniel. So as you know, Kazakhstan is a country that borders both China and Russia. This is my country of Kazakhstan! Unfortunately, Kazakhstan will always be known for Borat, a character played by a comedian from London. What was your question? Oh right, Kazakhstan and the Uyghurs. Yeah, so Kazakhstan does have a cultural connection to the Uyghurs who live in western China. But more importantly, Kazakhstan is a big part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. Kazakhstan has become the main hub between China and Europe for all the goods that are transported by train. And Kazakhstan is not exactly a rich country. So it's understandable that Kazakh leaders want Chinese investment, because the alternative is no investment. But the catch is, they have to keep their mouths shut about the Uyghurs being tortured or even killed for their organs in China. And there's now growing evidence that ethnic Kazakhs are also being arrested in China. On the plus side, for the Chinese regime, this relationship is a win-win. Like when Kazakhstan authorities arrested a human rights activist who helped expose the re-education camps in Xinjiang. Uh, totally not because the Chinese Communist Party asked them to. Thanks for your question, Daniel. And thanks to all my 50 Cent Army soldiers who support China Uncensored. It's only because of your support that we've been able to cover topics like this that most other media don't want to. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.